Greetings folks, welcome to another review. Uh, this is an exciting new product from Sonic Model. This is the ZOHD Dart XL Extreme, which is a bigger version of the uh, small Dart, which I've tried before. I'm a big fan of Sonic Model planes. They come up with unique designs, unique build methods, unique connection methods. Uh, I really like the Nano Talon and the plug-in wings. Mechanical connections to all the little uh, control surfaces, really, really clever and unique design. My favourite FPV wing is the Sonic Model HD. Uh, and my buddies agree with me, this is just the easiest FPV wing to fly. It flies beautifully, fast, smooth, no fuss, great plane. Is the mini version of it as well, which is a great fun little nipping around FPV wing. So now we have the Dart XL Extreme. It's been much hyped, there's been a lot of build up to it, it's been a slow release from ZOHD or Sonic Model uh, on RC Groups, you can read that big long sort of slow release thread there. Uh, a lot of anticipation. A lot of design work has gone into it apparently. Uh, it looks like a sort of a, a highly stylized wing and I'm always a bit concerned that uh, style has sort of taken over from functional design but uh, Apparently the aerodynamic design has taken the most time in the production of this model, so uh, here's hoping. A few things to mention first up, apparently it's made from biodegradable EPP, uh, which lasts for 100 years rather than 1,000 years. I guess that's a good thing, but 100 years is still a long time for it to biodegrade if it's thrown out. It looks like it's extremely easy to put together, so without further ado, let's just have a look inside. Really nicely packaged in a very sturdy box. almost uh, Apple company style <laughs> packing. Now we get a little bit of a user guide there. Uh, it's very, very easy to put together apparently. A little bit of glue to put the vortex generators in the wing, if they are actually vortex generators. I'm not too sure about that. All right, let's open the little box first. We have a prop, which is a nine by 4.5 prop. Little camera mounts, alternative camera mounts, I guess. Some double sided Velcro, Zero HD sticker, inspiring the future. Some plastic nuts and bolts and standoffs, that'll be for a flight control board, I think. Wing retaining bolts and little winglets or vortex generators, whatever they, whatever they are. Central spar, looks like about an 8mm or so. Tubular extruded. Carbon fiber is the rear canopy. Look at those big, big uh, vent holes there for fantastic airflow across the ESC. That is proper design, that that will flow beautifully. 30 amp ZOHD uh, ESC, 2S to 4S. Uh, that is cable tied onto that little uh, plywood support there. It's actually, it's actually broken through unfortunately. That must have got sort of crunched somehow. That's no good. We have a little JST pigtail there and XT60 uh, battery connection. We have two servo leads coming in from each side. That'll be for the Elevons and FPV uh, transmitter, radio transmitter as well, and it has electrical connections here. So there's no wires passing through, you click it in and the electrical connections will be made. Nice stuff, I like that, as long as they work okay. Opening the main canopy, we have a nice Velcro strap there, ply reinforcing on the base. Plenty of space up front for FPV cameras and uh, lots of airflow coming in there. I'd be a bit concerned about moisture and sand and grass getting in there, but it does have a skid to keep the nose up off the ground, so that's a nice design as well. Looking good so far. I'm very optimistic. Here we have the wings, the fins, and an ESC programming guide. That's a nice touch because often you don't know how to program these ESCs, so that's good. Essential information. Looks like they're sort of quick fit with a twist retaining nut there. Cool, looking forward to that. Two winglets that'll go in like that. Excellent. 
and the wings. Servo's already installed. Metal Gear Servo, digital Metal Gear Servo, MK series. Excellent. Already installed. I'd like to put a little safety band on the Clevis connector there. Little plastic skids underneath there. Gonna go that way. The winglet just slots in. Twist grip and that is fixed. And that looks cool. That's nice. So here you can see the connections going into this uh, six pin plug there. We've got the servo connection going in there obviously. And we've got another one here that we can plug whatever we want into. So that'll be uh, maybe slotting in here a, a video transmitter or the radio transmitter. But that's a, that's a brilliant option to include. Another very impressive design idea. Looking good so far. And we've got turned down wing tips and we've got slots for the uh, little winglets or vortex generators to, to sl slot in there. They look way too big to be proper vortex generators to me. Uh, vortex generators are generally meant to be just in the boundary layer, which is only a few millimetres thick on wings like this. So they'll stick right up through the boundary layer, and they're in line with the airflow as well. Uh, actually, I think the airflow might sort of because they're forward swept wings, the airflow might tend towards the middle a bit, so maybe they will create little vortexes, but uh, maybe they're sort of half winglets, half vortex generators. Anyway, means nothing until we take it for a fly and see if they actually work. I think what I'll do is I'll try them with the vortex generators and without, and we'll see if it makes a difference. The idea is to reduce the stalling tendency at uh, low flight speeds. What I'd like to do is try it with uh, vortex generators on one wing and not on the other wing and see if we get any sort of odd characteristics. Future experimentation. So they just get glued in there anyway. All right, let's do a quick assembly anyway. Spar slips in there. Slides through. Wings click in or slot into place, I should say. And we'll put the retaining screws in in a minute. These little plastic extrusions here fit into the slot and provide a bit more stability down the back for the wing. That's looking good. Wing retaining bolts now. Go into the hole, go right through, and snug the wings in nice and tight. This is excellent design. This is what I like about Sonic models in ZOHD. They think outside the square, come up with brilliant new ideas. I have had the Orbit wing, uh, and that was a, a beautiful easy wing to fly. Uh, it also had these sort of unique um, assembly ideas. I've since given that to a friend who was a, a total noob. Uh, he had flown fixed wing a little bit, but not much at all. First wing he's ever flown just flew straight out of the box, no dramas at all. So once you've set that up, you've got two little screws that you screw in here to retain this uh, back hatch. That's a little bit clunky, uh, but easy to change to something else. But there we go. That's a hot looking wing, I have to say. My wife doesn't like the design so much, she thinks it looks like a shoebox, but uh, we shall see. The proof is in the flying. Looks the fine, but uh, it has to fly well. And for me, it has to have no waggle and fly smooth without the need of a stabiliser. I think you need to start off with a stable platform, then add stabilisers if you want to. Uh, I tend to use uh, flight control boards just for return to home uh, and sort of altitude hold and loiter modes and things like that. I don't really use them for stabilisation. I think the model has to be stable to start off with. Three thousand four S Zippy battery. Don't have a camera in the nose yet, but uh, I'll be putting a uh, Mobius in using this 
holder here. Uh, I think that one's more for a GoPro style. Have some CG marks under the wing there. And that is balancing just a little bit behind. A little bit tail heavy still. So probably does need a camera in the nose there to balance it properly. It's close. Just need to replace this cable tie because that's busted, unfortunately. Okay, I put right into one, left into two, throttle into three. For the test flight, I'll just pop that down there. I'll just route my antennas out there for the moment. I'm going to run it with a um, current sensor. Of course, for a proper long range setup, you'd separate these things right out, but for a, a quick test flight, it's not going to matter. These screws just hold the rear hatch down. Not the best idea, I don't think, but that'll do the job. Here's my Mobius, and that will just fit in there perfectly. Designed for it, that's great. I'll secure that in somehow later on. Let's see how that balance goes anyway. So that's balancing pretty well perfectly on the CG now. So I'll do a static current test, uh, dynamically balance the prop as well. Bit buzzy. Still bad. Still feels the same, might need some actual prop balancing. Having trouble to balance that prop, it uh, seems to be a long way out of balance on the hub rather than the actual prop itself. So I'm changing to a prop that I know is better balanced. That's much better. See if we can improve it a little bit. That's excellent now. It's the same uh, pitch prop, just that it's uh, better balanced, that one. Okay, let's do a current draw. So that got up to 37 amps at uh, maximum throttle. I'll try it again out in the field when I'm flying anyway with a current sensor. Alright, so stay tuned for the next video. It's a bit wet and drizzly at the moment, so I can't actually fly it, unfortunately, even though I'm busting. Looking good so far. Oh, actually, I'll uh, measure the weight of it now. All set up. It's about 1,020 grams, just over a kilogram. Just feels right. Balanced on the CG marks. Got CG marks just there. Okay, now we're ready to fly. So stay tuned, I'll see you in the next video.